Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to export an original volume from GarageBand. Firstly, this title is actually a little misleading in that there is no way of exporting an original volume without making serious compromises on the quality. This volume loss is caused by an automatic process called normalisation. This occurs whenever a track is exported from GarageBand and what it does is effectively take the loudest peak and alter the volume so it sits at zero decibels. This ensures it won't be too loud when played back. So to get your music sounding louder, the peaks like kicks and snares need to be reduced so that when normalisation occurs, the peaks are not bringing down the overall volume. There are a number of ways of doing this, which I'll explain in just a moment. Before we get started, there's just a couple of things I need to mention. For this tutorial, I'll be using a short soundtrack I made for a friend for his drama project. And I think uh, it, uh, I use it because it's short, um, it's quite good middle ground for most bits of music you'll be mastering on. And anyway, here it is. And that brings me nicely on to my next point, which is quality. You'll probably have noticed the quality on that was awful. There's no bass at all. And that's just the microphone and speakers I'm using. Uh, they're rubbish. So, really, you're just going to have to believe me. Um, but anyway, the main thing you'll be noticed getting from this is that it's louder, and that's quite easy to get even through rubbish speakers. So the first thing I'm going to do is use an equaliser. What I'll be doing here is getting rid of all unwanted noise, um, like the very low sounds and the very high sounds. Uh, sounds below 20 hertz can't even be heard, so it makes sense just to remove them just in case uh, I want to denji in this piece of music. So there, I've used a high pass and a low pass there, and I've just taken away the very low and the very high. In case you missed that, the filter I'm using is this AU filter here in the second section of your effects, and that's effect slot 1. second effect I'll use will be a compressor. You'll notice there is actually a compressor here, but this compressor... Um, you just have less freedom than the other one I'll be showing you in just a moment. So turn that one off, and the one I'll be using is also in the second section, and it's labelled Dynamics, so not technically a compressor according to that. But when you go into it, you'll see it has a compressor and a gate. Uh, the gate will take away unwanted low volume frequencies, so good for background noise and recordings, but I won't be needing that. Um, the compressor is what we're going to be using, make sure the box is checked. And already, if I play it now, uh, it will sound louder. We'll also notice that there will be some strange volume fluctuations, and we'll sort that out in a moment. Uh, so yeah, you'll see there, um, the loud bits uh, here have all been reduced in volume. But the quiet bits have been left untouched, so they come out of proportion to the louder bits, making it sound all really messed up. Um, the reason for this is the threshold is way too low. So what you want to do is set it a bit higher, so it's about 6, 7 to 10-ish, somewhere around there. And I'm also going to, because I've raised the threshold, I'm also going to raise the ratio. The threshold is at what point the uh, compressor actually begins to act on the sound. At sounds above minus 6.87 decibels, uh, the compressor will start to act. The ratio is the um, sort of the harshness of the volume reduction. So a very low ratio would be just like barely any sort of compression at all, and a high ratio would be very very steep New York compression. So I'm just, uh, because it's a high, I'm set about 16 here. Now attack is how quickly the compressor acts. Release is how quickly it releases. So that it really is very intuitive. And of course the other one is the output here, and that's how much you make up for what you've taken away. So 6 is actually quite good here. Let's have a listen now. Right, as you see, it came very, very close to hitting the limiter um, up in the top left here. Um, that's because this compressor is like chopping off all those really high peaks. And that's good, it's just um, one thing you might get is intersample peaks, which if you're sort of converting a digital signal to an analog signal, you'll find the actual levels go actually higher than the digital signal pre presents. 
So what I'm going to do is turn it down just a tiny, tiny bit so we don't get this. So I say minus 0.5 decibels usually works, and that will mean it won't go so close to the limiter. So yeah, see, it, it went, hit the orange zone, but not the red zone. So next thing, uh, we have got a free effect slot here in case you want to put anything else in. Uh, I usually use a, um, a dimension expander stereo widener sort of thing there. Uh, but I'm going to leave it blank for you to decide what to do. Uh, but in the last slot, and please make sure it is the last slot, put in a peak limiter, which is here. So turn that on, go into it, and what you've got here, you've got attack and release time like in the compressor, and you've also got this pre-gain. Um, and pre-gain is just how much goes into your limiter, um, hence the pre. And uh, you'll see below that's limiting amount. So as I turn this up, you'll see a little blue bar sort of pop up here. And you'll want to adjust your pre-gain so that the bar doesn't really go past here, this sort of first notch along. So we'll just do that. So there we are, um, I guarantee that's louder than it was before, but just to see how much louder we're going to turn everything we've done off and listen to it now. Now let's turn it on. So just played a bit there and you'll see as I turned them on it became immediately a lot louder. So that is making it louder done really. If you want you could add some reverb because that won't add to the volume, but what if you don't uh, do make sure you do not use this equaliser here because when you turn that on and do anything on that uh, things will begin to clip again uh, that's because you're adding in extra effects after you've limited the peaks if you add in anything extra it will start clipping and you, the volume will go straight down again reversing all that you've just done so don't do that um, but yeah your track should be louder and when you share send song to iTunes uh, then it should be loud enough for you to hear uh, so thanks for watching and subscribe and all that. Uh, bye.